Well, I got the chain on. <laughs> and, well, I should have shown that. I think I brought it back here. Uh, I was going to show you the device that I used uh, for installing those endless type chains. It's a particular tool. I'll maybe show it some other day because you can break the chain to shorten it, you know, and that sort of thing, and to uh, fasten it back together. But they're pretty common, but you need one to do those kind of chains. And it worked smooth. Then I went out and drove it for a while to kind of break it in, you know, for the first adjustment. Uh, it looks good. I should be able to go the rest of this year without touching it, and probably most of next year. So that'll be good. Uh, but you know, I was out working on that stuff, didn't have my phone with me, and I hear a comment came in when I was out there. And You know, it was it was somebody making a comment on a previous video. You know, this happens quite often because I usually don't have comments open. I don't really want to take the time. I don't really have the time to mess around with comments. Unless I think it's something that can be useful. But to just turn people loose and let them make stupid comments, uh, no point in it really. So most of the time I don't, I don't even bother with them. You know, they, unless I think it can be constructive. But people, a lot of times they get the idea that, okay, they can come back later and find one where the comments are open and then go off on some rant on something, and that's what this guy had done. And it was a, uh, an insane sort of thing. I, I couldn't... It didn't make any sense, and I was going to actually <laughs> try to bring the comment out here and show, you know, kind of read it to you, but uh, I just immediately just blocked him, and anything he had on the channel is gone, you know. Um, not somebody I'm familiar with, so he must be somebody who just stumbled across the channel. But it had to do with that, with that video I did the other day about the Norland Act, you know. And I do stuff like that. If somebody asks me a question about a particular thing, I will make a little video, you know, on it, just to answer that question. And then if somebody else has got an interest in this. But this guy took great offense at that. For some reason, on that video. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was weird. But there are weird people, you know, and if you give them a voice, you have to deal with the weirdness. But when I do that, when I leave comments open sometimes, you really got to remember, I mean, it's kind of a trap. Um, I don't mind if somebody, you know, brings up something like when this guy had asked about this axe, it was on a whole different video, you know, it was just, that's fine. I try to leave stuff like that once in a while so that people can ask questions like that. But this rant this guy went on, this was just completely out of hand. There was nothing constructive about that. So he's just gone. But the point of that made no sense to me. You know, a lot of times, if I do political ones like I often do out here, I don't leave comments open on them because it would just be a nightmare of argument on there. You know, there would be no point to that. <laughs> so I, I say my piece and I'm done. But this guy was greatly insulted that I hadn't left the comments open in that axe one. And people get nuts with the axe thing. I mean, you know, to me, you find the ones that work right for you for that circumstance, and that's the end of it. I see people uh, doing weird things. Like, say, I, I see this all the time, and I, I think it's hilarious. You know, like they're, they're testing uh, like a hatchet. To see if you can split firewood, with it, firewood when you're out in the woods. Why in the world you are cutting your firewood into these little pieces, then splitting it into little pieces, and then lighting a fire? You know, you just pick up sticks, you light a fire, and then you can take and drag a 10-foot piece over there, put it on the fire, burn it in half, then burn it in half, then burn it in half. You know, you don't go making stove wood 
to have a campfire, you know, it didn't make any sense to me. But I see people all the time, oh, this hatchet would be great if you could split wood with it better. But, you know, anyway, I, I thought it was funny. I mean, because evidently he really he likes New Orleans or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. Uh, it didn't, like I say, make any sense. But I thought it was funny because then he was saying that he thought it was horrible that I preferred that other axe that I find that more useful than an Orland. Well, I do. I mean, it's just the thing. I just do. But he referred to that one as some cheap flea market $5 axe. Well, it, it's a Kelly. <laughs> You know, and I did, I think I paid five or maybe seven dollars with a broken handle at an auction sale for that axe. But Kelly made great axes. Some of the most sought after collectible axes were made by Kelly. You know, it, it was a funny thing to say. You know, evidently he just, that, he's a nut. Well, I get rid of nuts. You know, when he turned up, it's just uh, a good thing to, to get rid of them. And so when I leave comments open, sometimes, like I say, it's a bit of a trap. I know they're out there, and if they fall for it, okay, you know. I mean, I don't mind, like I say, uh, people ask questions all the time, and people make comments like that, but it can be useful. But like that, there's nothing there of use to anybody, so they just go. Uh, it's always a great thing to, to know those kind of people are gone. But as far as comments, I mean, like I say, I don't... Uh, it, I mean, it can be interesting sometimes. The comments can be interesting. But if you have something that's in the slightest bit controversial, which I really didn't think the axe one was, but uh, things get out of hand way too rapidly. You know, uh, people have to think before they make a comment, and people don't. People just run off at the mouth. And I don't know what they think is going to happen. You know, I, I would never do that on somebody's video because I know I'm going to get blocked, which is what would happen on any of these. I mean, I seldom comment on videos, and then it's only on people I know, you know. It isn't these random videos, and this evidently this guy just randomly ran into that video. And what not? What now we can fume in silence. Funny thing though, you know, it just it's always weird. But it's why, I mean I purposely leave comments off a lot of times just to avoid that sort of thing. <laughs> it's funny because he said, Oh, you just said that he <laughs> made that video to make money. Well I tell you what I make, like three, maybe four dollars maximum on that video. It's not really worth your time, you know. But somebody had a question that I wanted to answer. That's all it was. He is certainly no big money maker. But people are, have strange ideas about how profitable YouTube is too. Actually, for me, if I can slip them by, the ones that I really make money are, if I start talking political stuff, if I start talking that, I make money on them. But the normal day-to-day -day stuff, I don't, you know, you, you just you entertain a few people, but, and the political ones, you know, <laughs> I can make money on them if I can slip them by YouTube, but then you're always playing with the censorship thing, you know, uh, that's a constant problem. But even them, I don't do them to make money. I do them just to get it off my mind. If there's something that comes up and I want to talk about it, uh, I'll go ahead and talk about it. I do make money on them. But that ain't why I'm doing them. You know, it would be a lot easier to not do them, but I want to get it off my mind. Uh, you know, if there's something that's bugging me, I'll talk about it. Because <laughs> it really surprises me. Um, you know, sometimes in my day-to-day -day life, I do run across some of these liberals that it really surprises me how unaware they are of what's going on. 
You know, it, it, it's just, they're completely blank on this. I do blame the news media because if you don't, if that's all you're watching, if that's all you're paying attention to, yeah, you're, you're going to have a weird slant on things. But there's a lot of information out there. But for these people, you know, sometimes they really surprise me how much, how ignorant they are of the situation. Just totally, you know, it's funny. But then, you know, when this comes up, I'll talk about it. And I'm sure it pisses some people off. And I know if I was to leave comments open, well, I would make a lot more money on them because you do get by the activity on the video, that kind of, you know, so yeah, you can make money with the comments, but I don't need that negativity. Nobody needs that negativity. You know, uh, I, I can tell by the thumbs up or thumbs down, kind of which way this goes. I don't often look at them. In fact, a lot of them now well, I guess it depends on what device I'm, I'm on looking at them. But some of them, it doesn't even show the negatives. They, well, they quit doing the negatives because it made some of the, the liberal news channels look really horrible. Or, or some of the political channels. You know, I, I think they got so many more thumbs down compared to thumbs up. You know, it, so they quit doing a thumbs down. And they play with them numbers anyway, but you know, on most of the videos, I, I leave those so they aren't viewable. But I can see people's reaction kind of in those. I don't get a lot of thumbs down. You know, the people... I guess the thumbs down people, I probably already blocked all of them. Or they just don't watch this channel. People watch, you know, they find their own little reality. And I'm not part of their reality. You know, so they simply don't watch. It is funny too, you know, I, I'm not, I have nothing to do with Facebook, but I get ads all the time. Um... For, for Facebook saying, oh, you know, you got to get involved with this. Join Facebook and find your tribe. You know, and I think, wow, that's really, you know, when when the idea is this is supposed to bring you all together, and and here they're, they're really trying to separate you. You know, you, you can find your own liberal reality or your conservative reality, you know, Kind of weird. But, you know, like I say, Facebook is a weird thing, so I stay away from that altogether anyway. You know, I said before, YouTube is the only social media that I'm involved in, and I'm barely involved in that. You know, that's why, like, if I was to put the comments on, sure, I could get involved in that. I could be flaming and getting flamed, and, you know, well, what's the point of it? You know, I say what I need to say and I get it off my mind. And this other stuff, if I do a video and it can be of any informative use to somebody, great, you know. Because I don't, I'm not trying to go a certain direction with this. I'm not uh, peddling anything, you know, I'm just, it's just my life. But anyway was a funny deal. Uh, you you kind of hate to have to block people. You know, they can still see the videos, they just can't comment on them, you know, anymore. And any previous comments that they made, though, uh, like I say, this guy was not familiar to me, they're gone. You know, which can sometimes break up a conversation in comments, which is unfortunate, but it's a relief if there's somebody going to behave and be behaving like that, to just get them gone. You know, I, like I said before, I, I've done this. If I'm on somebody else's channel and I see somebody making insane comments, 
I will actually go and block them from my channel just to keep this sort of thing from happening. You know, because it can happen. And I found that works pretty good. But when, when people are just, I mean, there are people who are just really crazy and social media can kind of be attractive to them because they can behave badly with, in theory, no consequences. But sometimes there's consequences. You know, and I'm not, if somebody's going to behave that way, they're just going to be gone. I mean, that, that's all it is. You know, what if somebody has something informative? Yeah, but that wasn't, that was just nuts. But I get, I get a few of them. Not so much anymore. Like I said, maybe I've got rid of all of them, or <laughs> I don't know. But I really don't get many anymore. Uh, it used to be a pretty common thing. But I kind of was hoping maybe that had faded away, but no, they're still lurking. Well, I think they're actually making new ones every day. But that's all. But the chain works. Uh, funny, because, you know, my sprockets were worn out, really. I maybe have to show you these someday, but, and the chain was still really pretty good. I was tempted to actually continue using that chain. It was in good enough condition. I could have kept using it, but I already had a new one, so I figured, okay, put it on, it'll be done with it. Well, I'm going to hang on to that old one. I might be able to make use of that. But when I went out and drove it and come back, I saw where I had been out earlier in the day with the motorcycle. You know, a big single cylinder, especially when your chain and sprockets are worn, it really hammers on them if you've got any free play in there. I mean, you got a little bit if you got enough. And I could see in the sand, when I had come up the hill, it was kind of wet sand. And every time the cylinder fired, it had moved the sand a little bit. You know, you could see a pattern there from the thunk, 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 you know, every time the cylinder fired. It doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> you know, I got rid of that. But... When they start wearing chains out, they will start hammering themselves apart. You know, the it'll take out swing arm bearings, can be hard on transmission bearings, you know, so it, it's good to have that taken care of. Now I can kind of ride trouble free for a while. Because it had been on my mind a little bit, you know, that I had to do something with that chain. Part of it is I'm, a lot of times I'm hauling loads, you know, like a 50 pound bag of corn strapped on behind is a bit of an awkward load. And if your chain is loose, then it's going bang, 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 bang. So that's taken care of. Well, now I've got to replant some corn. I got some critter. It's either mice or gophers with really light feet, because I can't see tracks. But they have gone, and every place where I reseeded corn, they will dig down, pull the shoot out, eat the corn, and leave that shoot laying there. So I'd have to do some more gopher hunting someday, too. But, well, I had a cabbage that got yanked out of the ground today, I found, but that was a deer. Deer tracks came up, cabbage was pulled out of the ground. Didn't eat the cabbage, stuck the cabbage back in, but he kind of took a beating in the transfer, but, but that was weird. But them deer at night will slip around. But what has been pulling up that corn has been a bit of a mystery to me. It hasn't bothered the beans, but the corn. They'll actually dig down, you know, and pull it up. There'll be a little hole dug, but no footprints. So I, I thought it was pheasants, but the pheasant would leave us a footprint. Even a gopher, you know, usually you can see a gopher footprint, but whatever it is, they're being sneaky. It's just like that corn disappears out of the ground. She's a mystery, but I got more seed and I'll do some more replanting. That's all I can do.